Welcome to El Somosa NMMS podcast, where we bring you exciting conversations with the thought leaders from various fields. I am K.S. Madhavra, Professor of Statistics from the Department of Statistics in Somosa. Let us welcome our guest, Dr. Ashish Sen Gupta, who is CSIR Emeritus Scientist, Government of India at IIT Karakpur, India who is being interviewed by Muskan Keshwani and Shanwari Bote. Hello and welcome to the very interesting podcast we are having today where we, the students of IFS 2023, organized by FVKM's NMIMS, Neil Kamal School of Mathematics, Applied Statistics and Analytics are going to dive into the statistical world where we are going to talk about data science, deep learning and journey of our guest speaker. I am Sharvari Bote and Muskan Keshwani will be the host for today's podcast episode. The guest speaker we have with us today is Honorable Dr. Ashish Sen Gupta. Firstly, we would like to introduce our guest speaker. Dr. Ashish Sen Gupta is a statistical scholar with a diverse academic background. He received his MSc degree from Calcutta University and SD from Indian Statistical Institute, India in 1975-1976. Dr. Ashish Sen Gupta holds a PhD degree in statistics from Ohio State University, USA. He currently holds the position of adjunct professor at Augusta University, Georgia, USA. Distinguished professor at Middle East Technical University, Ankara, Turkey and advisor consultant at Indian Statistical Institute, Kolkata, India. Dr. Ashish has visited many countries worldwide on academic assignments over the years. He has been visiting professor at University of California, Stanford University, USA and many others. He continues to be prolific researchers, researcher having 100 plus publications to his credit in peer-reviewed national and international jur- journals. He has written 12 books and volumes. He is chairman and expert member of many national committees of Department of Stati- Science and Technology, Government of India. He has been a principal investigator in many funded research paper, research projects, including three mega projects from Government of India. He had supervised more than 10 PhD students. He had served on the editorial board of many statistics journals as editor-in-chief and associate editor. Dr. Ashish has received many national and international recognitions, including two lifetime achievements and distinguished statistician award. Recently, he was conferred CSIR Emeritus Scientist from HRDG, Ministry of Science Technology, Government of India. He is Fellow of Indian Society for Probability and Statistics, National Academy of Sciences, India, and only Fellow from India for American Statistical Association, USA, and elected member, International Statistical Institute, the Netherlands. We are pleased to have you with us and thank you for joining the initiative taken by ICS team. We have so much to ask and so little time in hand, but nevertheless, to begin with questions. You earned master's degree from Calcutta University and SD from Indian Statistical Institute in Kolkata, India. Can you tell us about your experiences studying at such renowned institutions and how that education influenced your career trajectory? Thank you, first of all, for giving me this opportunity to interact with you. And it's a pleasure for me to visit your institute. And I wish you all a very bright career. Okay, the students, all of you have a very bright career and application of statistics in your career. That's what we'd be looking forward to. Now, yes, I was very fortunate to have very, very good teachers uh, who shaped and also inculcated me, me the drive for learning statistics and using statistics. So I was a student at Ohio State University also where I had some other professors in addition to my teachers in Calcutta University and ISI. Uh, My teachers gave me the ideas of how to look at the data, first of all, and then not only that, the analysis part, but also how to use it rigorously. 
So the rigorous part came from my training in the ISI and Calcutta. And then I went to US for doing my PhD. I worked with Professor Sierra. And Sierra is very known, well known for the applied statistics. So he was in my committee for the PhD. And he advised me and I had come to appreciate his work on the applied statistics using data. And that's where I got more and more involved in using data analysis and using my theoretical training for the application of statistics in a rigorous way. Uh, again, my teachers both in Calcutta University inspired me, inculcated me, uh, or inculcated in me the drive for using rigorous statistics. So the, you don't, you want to use statistics in a way that you come up with answers, you're putting it in a package, but you want something that the package can be substantiated with statistical theory. Okay. So moving forward, you have worked a lot on circular data. Even the research paper you presented today was based on manifold data. So what inspired you to pursue your study on multidimensional data? And what were some of the key challenges and opportunities that you encountered along the way? Uh, the circular data is a thought of a new area. Definitely in India, when I came back from US, uh, so with some training, uh, with some collaborations from there, uh, there was almost no university or institute in India where we could have a training in circular statistics. On the other hand, uh, with the advancement of technology, uh, with the different types of applications coming in here, real life applications, we could see that we need to move forward from linear data to non-linear data. So the circular data is one aspect where you move away from linear data. So not everything is linear in the world and data also comes from certain situations which is non-linear. I gave lots of examples today about non-linear data. So I wanted to move to something new and where I can use and rather get the challenges into the applications. And this was an area which fascinated me. Lots of new types of applications, as I told you today, on the astrostatistics, bioinformatics, circadian rhythms, and all these are related to human beings. So what fascinated me is that these are applications in the real life. It's for the good for person at an individual level, health-wise, like I talked about the circadian rhythms and the genomes and the genes, and also in the nation in general, international also, for the human society, like the one I gave you about the space junk the example which affects all of us in the world. So moving from the microscopic level to the macroscopic level, uh, we have a fascinating application of the circular data. So this application is one thing which attracted me. And the next thing that attracted me was that call for the challenges of learning new areas of the theoretical parts. So whatever we learned in the analysis, for example, real life analysis, we had to move into Fourier analysis, which is used a lot in circular data. So the mathematical areas were new, challenging to us, and complex analysis, uh, also Lie algebra, Lie group, things like that came in. So we, you keep revolving. The more you go, you learn new and new things, new and new things for mathematics. And finally, for this to be applicable, you need computers. So that's another challenge. How do you write programs which are efficient, algorithms? So it's a, it's the culmination of these three trinities of knowledge in our statistical science. Mathematics, computer science, and statistics. Mathematics for the rigor, computer science for its applications, and obviously statistics for the inference. Okay? That is based on your subjective, not subjective, but objective inference. So... What a fascinating area where you can combine these three trinities, the three pillars, and use them for the benefit of the mankind. That's what motivated me here. Next. Sir, you had been a principal investigator in many funded research papers, research projects, including three mega projects from the government of India. Can you walk us through a specific research project where you used statistical methods to analyze high dimensional data? I would say that uh, in the research projects I used over here, it was big data to some extent. High dimensional, yes, in terms of the number of variables that we used. So one example I'll give you was with respect to the tourist survey, foreign tourist survey. Uh, this was one of the biggest major projects. And I'm proud that a statistician, as a statistician, I could get that one. It was previously used to be only with the people in the economics and management. But uh, somehow the ministry had faith in me and uh, we could 
tell them, show them that statistics can be used here in a proper way and that could give you relevant information, accountability also. We could supply them with the errors of the estimation. And this one is carried all over throughout the India. So we had about 14 different national airports and then I think about 12 uh, land ports, seaports where the data was collected. Mumbai was one of the ports. Extensive data was collected and this was for one year continuous and we had to apply statistical methodology in sample survey. The many challenges because studies come depending on the season and not only for sightseeing, tourists come for medical reasons, tourists come for also financial reasons, business, people from Japan, they want to bring in new machineries over here. So you get to learn many aspects of why they come and when they come, there's an insurance coming in, medical insurance is needed. People who are going out from India also, they are in a sense also contributing to the tourism. So we have to take the data because they have to buy their insurance from here if they are going outside. So all this contributes to a national economy. So multifaceted, age-wise, sex-wise, race-wise, region-wise. So these are all the various strata. So we have to use modern methods of sample survey. And then we did not stop there. I wanted to show that we are doing it in a good way, in a proper way, a rigorous way. So I had to bring in the error estimates, which was based on the different types of Rao Hartley Cochrane methods that we used, the schemes that we use for sampling, not just the random sampling or stratification, but further to that. So I think the ministry appreciated that and came back again. So I got a second mega project from them for the second time. And we are very much delighted that the, yeah, I th that was the largest project, a survey project in Indian Statistical Institute. And I think any statistics university or department. And uh, the, both the reports in their entirety, uh, they have been posted in the, our ministry website, Ministry of Tourism. Why did I enjoy it and what was the outcome? Why did I like most? Is that we, it was a benefit to our country also. We got several papers I came across from different countries where they looked at the data and they wanted to come and visit India because we could show the medical tourism, the medical cost, what they have over in India is much less than any other country. On the other hand, the satisfaction level of the students who got those is very high. So there are many papers that came out. I gave some references there also. The ministry also I shared that they showed that India is a very lucrative place for them where they can have good treatment at a reasonable price. And also infrastructure is may not be as good as the US or our foreign countries, but that's sufficient for one and also optimal, if not, I'll say the maximal in that sense for the services they're getting here. Okay. So that's that's what I enjoyed. And this mega survey had led to many other things. Other countries wanted to buy the data. And obviously the government, we had some meetings, whether we could sell the data to them, but their political reasons, economic reasons, we refrain from that. But something that statisticians will enjoy, I'm sure you people will enjoy using the real life data, lots of challenges, collecting the data, non-sampling error, how would they respond, why would they respond, always this question, how much money they're spending, there are also the questions of personal nature, but they are not personalized, you have to convince them that this your name will not be there, how do you do that, randomization, keeping watermark, all kinds of things were there, okay, so... I think as a statistician, uh, to be a true statistician in today's world, you have to deal with real data. And sample survey, nationwide data, what more can a statistician ask for? You have been a continuous learner. You hold a PhD degree in statistics. You are a distinguished professor at various renowned universities and you have 100 plus publications. So what role do you enjoy the most, being a student, teacher, or an author? I'm always a student. <laughs> so in our profession, you are always a student. You are always learning. So student with the student interaction is what I enjoy most. While I, I am a student, as a student, I talk with you people, and you come with questions, and we interact. That is the most enjoyable part, because that is what actually is our reward. If we can inculcate in you the thirst 
for the knowledge if i see you are wise wide and up okay you are looking at some problem sir how do i solve this this is the thing the data over here this is the mathematical problem these are the challenges and i can see that yeah you are motivated to work on that maybe my talk maybe my interaction has motivated you to think about new problems and that also makes me learn okay so next time when i come to you maybe i'll think of newer problems things which will be more interesting more useful to you and i think that is the most rewarding part of my career definitely research with my fellow research scholars they are also my students and all with my academic collaborators they are there but i think at the root level young students with their eyes widened up future vision with ambition and with a drive definitely that is our reward what do you think are the most promising areas for further research in high dimensional data analysis and what breakthroughs do you hope to see in the coming years uh, as a statistician high dimensional data still is of course definitely posing problem in the high dimensional data basically we are still thinking of the situations where sample size is small p the dimension is large like in bioinformatics so a huge number of genes some the number of maybe the cancer patients is small how do you deal with that there have been some uh, results there uh, breakthroughs maybe it's too early to say that but yes there have been some papers in that and uh, why do we use statistical theoretical methods which are been used for n greater than p modified theoretically for deal with n less than p notably the work of professor p k sen sivastava m s sivastava which i paid in the annals they point in certain directions these are the theoretical works application wise in the computational wise world okay definitely if you have such a situation you have to be careful especially when n is less than p if that's the high dimensional data we are thinking of n is larger than p p is also large and the ratio that we are looking at goes to zero that is probably not much of a concern but we need uh, techniques to reduce the dimension that is one thing is definitely needed and this reduction of dimensionality should be based on rigorous objective statistical methods okay i should not be able to just say throw this away and throw that away but it should be based on statistical methodology possibly inferential like the principal component analysis is talking about today and the challenge lies with the emergence of new types of data whatever you used to learn in the college or during your studies would be mostly based on data on the euclidean space rp but now it's not so you are having data colored data text data as i'm showing you over here so those are different types of data we are having data on the manifolds on the sphere you are looking at earthquakes the which consists of data on the longitude land latitude and also the place that you are having uh, the richter scale that you are looking at okay so these are all necessary so this type of data is throwing in challenges i talked about the image analysis so from rgb we are moving to hsv different types how do you class classify them how do the image analysis chest x rays in our corona that's a very important one so that's not sort of linear so many of the things that have curve uh, then you have also functional data that's coming in so it's a fascinating world we are entering now new ideas uh, will be thrown up on you thrust up on you but you can't learn everything in the college you will be provided with the basic ingredients and as you go forward the areas that you like you pick up you have to come up with your new ideas be prepared to do that you think about new ideas and think in a rigorous way how to apply thanks since you have supervised more than 10 phd students can you give some suggestions about writing a research paper for a person who is doing it for the first time uh first of all the correction is more than 17 <laughs> okay not 10 i think it's a old one somewhere you got from yes. so there there are still some working okay i have some working with me uh, right now in turkey uh, and uh, you think that turkey is a country uh, over there we have not visited there but there are some very good students there the faculty members are very good statistics is highly appreciated in finance and they have worked with me in uh, one of them uh, a girl recently finished her phd last month and submitted that and she went into germany in network analysis lot of statistics computation with circular data a very fascinating area new areas that's why i'm saying the challenges will come up uh 
yeah i would say for your research all of you want jobs that's what sure at the end of the day you would like jobs uh, you would like to be you know i would not want you to confine into certain particular areas as such keep it broad uh, make your thesis in such a way that it has all the three trinities that i'm talking about computer science statistics and mathematics that's what my student from turkey she did okay elif she did a wonderful job with the network analysis using circular regression the variable selection and then the cluster analysis the machine learning came in and the not the way that you think of we think of correlation pair wise but in network analysis there can be sets three or four vari more variables having correlation with another three or more four variables together how do you look at that okay so for example the affinity between mother and father together for the daughter or for the son how do you do the correlation there okay so three at a time let's say two and one group and another one group so this kind of correlations these are the new concepts if you are looking at the network analysis you have to define this multi way correlations clusters we have been learning about all our non overlapping that is not the case in certain cases there is enough reason that a point can may belong to both the clusters because one cluster you are doing maybe depending on your educational level let's say the another type of clustering for the same group maybe depending on not only the educational level your financial status now it depends on which one you are putting stress you cannot segregate them education and maybe the financial status sometimes go hand in hand okay because of nowadays a lot of money is spent to to that so the same entity same individual can belong to two clusters so they can be overlapping clusters so in machine learning these are the new concepts that's coming in so you have to go into that area and when you write your thesis you use real data come up with a rigorous statistical methodology pick up a problem where you can use mathematics statistics mathematical statistics that's one thing you should do pick up the problem so that the application of these will need applications of computer technology you can write a program in python write and use put a use an r library that will be also useful so the computer part is there and then finally use it on real life data if you can show that you have used on the human being something that is useful for at a personal level or at the level of the society what more can you expect that is what we are statisticians we are persons in the for the applications okay, we look upon ourselves as people who are solvers problem solvers real life problem solvers not the abstract only real life problem solvers we get the real data you solve them out of the real life problem solvers so we make sense out of the data in that way so write your thesis in such a way and then i'm sure you will be getting good jobs both in the academia as well as in the industry next you have been recipient of many national and international recognitions including two lifetime achievements and distinguished statistician awards what has been your happiest moment in the journey awards will come usually you know when you are in this profession you you want to write things we don't usually write to get awards we write for the enjoyment of learning and also disseminating this okay. so that is what we go for uh, the highest point well there have been many ones okay so cr our professor example uh, during my speech uh, he was there there's no light in hyderabad university one time for one hour there was no light and sara was there sitting and listening to my talk i gave the entire talk in one hour without any light without any board and uh, he came up after that and he congratulated me as a student he said that she is a fantastic talk so that i think was one of the things i'll never forget somehow because of his presence i think i got also that inspiration so i could see my slides in my head you know so i can visualize them so whatever i was talking about i could translate it from the images to the verbal thing uh yes uh, that was one thing and uh, besides that the asa fellowship that i talked about uh they selected me to be the only speaker as a, they call it as a statistical ambassador okay i was the ambassador over there in that sense citizen ambassador is a specific term of asa so i went into china as a citizen ambassador and uh, i gave my talk there as the only technical speaker and uh, 
the high point was that there was thousand more than thousand people in that stadium. So people, I thought they were not understand English that well. China, of course, you know. The, but then I was surprised. Young people like you, they are speaking very well English, okay, and they could communicate. And those people, when I talked about, I really enjoyed uh, with uh, this delivery of my speech, and I talked about these modern areas. They enjoyed, came back, and when I entered there, they have like our oh, NSO. There's an organization in China. I entered there, and this is my one of the high points. I want to enter there and see the. As soon as I enter over there in that museum, statistical museum, like in our national survey, they have that in Beijing, China. I find who else? The picture of Professor P. C. Mahalanavish. Okay, so I was really flabbergasted with that, became very emotional to see such there over there in China. Okay, over I said yes, we Indians have done something for statistics in the world. Next. The Nilkamal School of Mathematics, Applied Statistics and Analytics offers two master's program, namely MSc Statistics and Data Science and MSc Applied Statistics and Analytics. Three other undergraduate programs offered are in the streams of Applied Statistics and Analytics, Data Science and Artificial Intelligence. Did you have any opportunity to look into the program structure and reflect on their suitability in terms of international benchmarking? impairing graduate abilities industry preparedness and placement i had a very brief exposure to that very brief uh, but as a little bit familiar by let's say here say uh, professor madhav rao has been a good friend of mine so sometimes we chat about the programs and i must say your program here here uh, is very competitive uh, there's a very very good program very balanced program it's a need of that day Uh, some of the universities are trying to come up with programs like yours because uh, you have such a balanced uh, faculty and you have this advantage of people from computer science teaching if you are in a statistics department statistics people will be teaching but uh, in the universities but in a place like this you have the opportunity to have some maybe people who are well at converts with the computer science to teach you some courses uh, like in python language or in writing the programs themselves for the big data that is also bringing you up to date with the advancement so i think this is a very balanced program and the only thing uh, comment over here that uh, the pace at which statistics is moving right now this is uh, there are very the books are needed more and more to give you exposure to the new advancements this i would uh, request and i think they have probably done it your faculty members should come up with their own notes incorporating the new advancements you won't get this in books okay many of these are not available in the books and moving so fast so like the circular data i'm talking about directional data the statistical machine learning thing new and new methodologies are being evolved so cart lasso they are books separately but if you go to a textbook you won't find it in in in, in a very scarred class so all this covered in your textbook over here you have to go through the papers that's where your faculty members will come up with that packages you have to get to those subroutines okay, how do you how do you get that so this is a lot of work on the faculty i even i understand but it's probably worthwhile also and you students uh, i think are very fortunate to be in this kind of institute where you have this uh, unique opportunity to have the exposure with very good faculty members here Okay. Next, the last question for the day is: Did you ever know about any of the core faculty in the Department of Statistics in N Somasa? If yes, how well you know them, their research interest and publications? If not, do you have any opinion on the broad profile background of the core faculty and their research areas of interest? Yes, I do have some. exposure some familiarity with the faculty member here uh, one in particular of course was some other bra uh, we have known each other for quite some time uh, and yes i'm familiar with uh, some of his work he has done some excellent work in mathematical statistics also applications and i am glad that he has come over here and uh, he is working with you he has nurtured a particular program and this is this little seed that he has sowed over here is dog going to become a big tree and give shades to many of your students over here uh, again 
yes uh, this uh, department has both mathematics people i know a few of them i came to know some of them uh, and the statistics over here sort of new it's not a very old department at all it's a new department it's compared to the other departments in statistics it's still in its infancy probably moving towards the childhood right now but even then is doing a very impressive job i am think i think you are lucky put in all your efforts and you have good training and a very bright future to all of you thank you thank you so much for your valuable time and patience with this we come to the end of this podcast session thank you for tuning in we also want to express our gratitude to the platform that ics 2023 and nmims gave us thank you very much and That's it. Is mine also. I enjoyed being with you and attending this conference, ICS two twenty three. Thank you.